Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to solve some extra problems in proportionality for grade 9. These problems are very important for official exams. Let's start by the first question. An article costs $100. It's subjected to 30% discount on its price, followed by 30% increase. What should be its final price? Well, in order to solve such question, we should solve each step alone. First of all, we have 30% discount. So here we say, after 30% discount, what should be the price of the article? You must pay attention to the keywords in the question discount, it means minus. So the price of this article will decrease by 30%. Well, how to solve it in this way? Its initial price was $200. We write it 200. It degrees, so we write minus. It degrees by 30%, but 30% out of how much? It's out of $200. So we write it $200 minus 30% of $200. How to solve it? 30% is 30 out of 100. So we write it $200 minus 30 over 100 of it means times 200 dollars now if you not we can simplify 200 by 100 we get a 2 2 times 30 is 60 so it's 200 dollars minus 60 dollars it gives us 140 dollars well if you read the question again after the 30 percent discount the price increased by 30 percent but what price right now we don't uh, deal with the price $200, it was the initial price. Now we are dealing with the price that is after the 30% discount, which is $140. So, after the 30% increase, increase means we have plus here and not minus. Well, what should be the price of the article? It's $140 increased by 30% of $140. So here we deal by the final price uh, after discount, which is $140. Now we write it $140 plus 30% is 30 out of 100. Of means times $140. Now we can also simplify zeros with 100. Here we get 3 times 14, which is 42. So it's $140 plus $42. It gives us $182. Now we can say that the final price of this article after the discount, 30% discount followed by 30% increase, its price will be $182. Another question. After 40% 40, uh, 40 discount, the sale price of an article became $240. Well, here we have the percentage of discount and also we have the sale price. So after this discount, the price of the article became $200. Now what was its initial or original price? If you know something, the original price represents for us a percentage 100%. This percentage degrees after discount by 40%. Now what should be the percentage of the sale price? Isn't it 100% minus 40%? It gives us 60%. So the percentage of sale price is 60%. Why did we write it? Since we have here given the sale price of the item, we need its percentage in order to find the original price. Now we can say that this $240, it represents for us 60%. Well, what about the original price whose percentage is 100%? So 100% gives us what? X. Now we can say that X is 100% times $240, all divided by 60%. Well, here also we can simplify, we get x equal $400. Another question. Now after 10% increase, increase here we have it plus and not minus. The sale price of an article became $440. Now what was its original price? Well, also we have given the sale price, which is $440. In order to find the original price, we need to uh, find the percentage of the sale price. 
Well, the original price is 100%. It increased by 10%, so 100% plus 10%, it gives us 110%. Now we can say that the percentage of sale price, which is $440, is 110%. Now we can write 110% gives us $440. What about the original price whose percentage is 100%? It gives us X. Now we can say that X is 100% times $440 all divided by 110%. Sure, we can simplify percent by percent. We solve it, we get X equals $400. Now another question. Here we have the original price. And the final price, the sale price, we just need to find the percentage of discount. As you see, the original price of a ring was $250. This ring was sold at $200. As you see, we have lost here $50 from its price. So we have lost, it means discount. Now, what was the percentage of loss or discount on its price? If you know something, what's the uh, price of loss first or price of discount is $250 minus, uh, sorry, minus $200, so it gives us $50. Well, we have lost $50 from its price, but $50 out of what? Isn't it $50 out of $250? So the percentage of discount was $50 out of $250. We multiply the fraction by 100% to get its percentage. Now we can simplify 50 over 250. It gives us 1 over 5. Now 100% over 5. It gives us 20%. So the percentage of discount here is 20%. Another question which is very important for official exams. An urn contains 800 colored boards. Well, 800 colored balls distributed as follows. 20% of the balls are red and 3 over 5 of the balls are yellow. The rest are green. Now find the number of green balls and that of yellow balls. Let's start by the number of green balls. First of all, in order to find the number of green balls, we need to, uh, to use something which gives us numbers. As you see here, we have percentage, here we have a fraction. To use the number, we have here only 800 balls, which is the total number of all balls. It represents for us 100%. Well, 100% gives us 800 balls. Now, what's the percentage of green balls? If we can find this percentage, we can find the number of green balls. How to do it? The total percentage is 100%. It's distributed as 20% for the red balls. But here we can find the percentage of the yellow balls. If we find this percentage, we can find the remaining percentage, which is for the green balls. Let's start by it. Well, we have 3 over 5 of the balls are yellow. Then we can say that the percentage of the yellow balls is 3 over 5, we multiply the fraction by 100%, we get it 60%. Well, now we have just found the percentage of the yellow balls, which is 60%. We have here 60% for the yellow balls and 20% for the red balls. It gives us all 80%. Now what remains for the percentage of the green balls? Isn't it 100% minus 80%? So we can now say that the percentage of the green balls is 100% minus 20% plus 60%. So it's 100% minus 80%. It gives us 20%. Now we can say that the total percentage, which is 100%, it represents for us the 800 balls, all of them. Now what about the green balls? 20% represents what? X. We can say that X is... 20% times 800 balls all over 100%. Here we can find that the number of green balls is 160. Now we are still having another part in this question. 
We have found the number of green balls and we need to find the number of yellow balls. Aren't we having 3 over 5 of the balls are yellow? Now we can say that 3 over 5 of the 800 balls are yellow. We can solve it in this way. So the number of yellow balls is 3 over 5 of 800 balls of becomes times. So it's a 3 over 5 times 800. It gives us 480 balls. The second part is also very important. If you know something, we have 10% of the green balls and 30% of the yellow balls are numbered. They carry numbers. Well, verify that there are 16 numbered green balls and 144 numbered yellow balls. How to solve it? Now we need to deal by part A. We have found the number of green balls and the number of yellow balls. Now we have 10% of the green balls are numbered. So we can say that the number of green balls that are numbered is 10% of 160, which was the number of green balls. So 10% isn't it 10 out of 100? So we can write it as 10 over 100. We replace off by times 160. Now 10 over 100 times 160, it gives us 16 balls. Well, as you see, they asked us to prove that it's 16 numbered green balls. We have just proved it. Now we have also to prove that the number of yellow balls that carry numbers is 144. Note that if we refer again to the given, we have 30% of the yellow balls are numbered. The yellow balls, we have just found their number. So we can say that the number of yellow balls that carry numbers is 30% out of how many yellow balls is out of 480 balls. So we can say it 30% is 30 out of 100 of becomes times 480. Now we can solve it. We get that the number of yellow balls that carry numbers is 144 balls. Now let's start by part two. All the green and yellow balls, we have picked them up and put them in another urn together. This urn will only contain now the green and the yellow balls. Well, find the percentage of balls that are not numbered in this urn. We need to find the percentage of the balls that do not carry a number, uh, as well as if they are green or yellow. Well, first of all, we need to find the number of balls that do not carry any number. How to solve it? First of all, the number of green and yellow numbers as all in this urn will be 160 plus 480. It gives us 640. So this urn will contain 640 balls. Now let's find the number of balls that are numbered. We have just proved that we have 16 numbered yellow balls and 144 numbered, uh, sorry, 16 numbered green balls and 144 numbered yellow balls. So all the balls that carry numbers are 16 plus 144. It gives us 160. Now, what is the number of balls that do not carry a number? Isn't it 640 minus 160? So it gives us 480 balls. Now, how to find the percentage of balls that do not carry any number? Aren't they 480 balls out of 640? So we can write it as 480 over 640. And as a fraction, we should multiply it by 100% to get its percentage. So it's 75%. Now we can deduce that the percentage of balls that do not carry any number in the second urn, it will be 75%. Another question which is also very important. A store declared 20% discount on its articles. Well, how to find the prices in this case? In part one, an item costs 500, uh, sorry, $50. It's the initial price of this item. 
Now, what will be the price of this item after discount? Here we can solve it using two methods. We can say that the percentage of discount is 20%. Well, what about the percentage of the sale price? We can say it's 100% minus 20%. It gives us 80%. So the percentage of sale price is 80%. Now we can say that the $50, the main price of the item is 100%. It gives us $50. What about the 80%? 80% gives us, for example, we name it Y. Now Y is 80% times $50 all over 100%. We can solve it. We get it $40. Another method. We can also say that after 20% discount, the price of the article becomes $50 minus 20% of $50. Well, 20% it means 20 out of 100 of becomes times. So we write it $50 minus 20 over 100 times $50. Now 20 over 100 times $50, it gives us $10. So it's $50 minus $10. It gives us $40. Sure, as you know, we will get the same answer. So both methods, uh, methods are correct. Now let's start by the second part. The sale price of an article is $160. Find its original price. Well, how to solve it? We should keep in mind that the percentage of sale price after 20% discount is 80%. We have the sale price which is $160. So we can say that the 80% represents for us $160. Now, what about the original price? The percentage of the original price is 100%. So, what does 100% represent for us? Let's name X the original price. If you not designate by X the original price, then X will be 100% times $160 over 80%. We can solve it. We get in this case that X is $200. Now, let's start by part 3. Designate by X the main price. Keep in mind something. Main price, original price, and initial price are all the same and their percentage is always 100%. Uh, so, designate by X the main price of an item before discount, sure. And Y the sale price of this item after discount. Now, establish a relation between X and Y. In general, we can say that Y, which is the sale price after 20% discount, it will be the original price X, which degrees, so here we have minus, discount means minus, it degrees by 20%. Well, 20% out of what? Out of the original price, which is X. Well, so Y equals X minus 20 over 100 times X. 20 over 100 isn't at 0.2, so we can say that y is equal to x minus 0.2x. x, it means 1x. Now, 1 minus 0.2 isn't at 0.8, so we can conclude that y is equal 0.8x. This relation is very important. Now, we're going to use it in all the rest parts. If you know something in part B, a customer paid $320 for an article. He bought this article, so we are dealing with the sale price of the article. So $320 is the sale price of the article after 20% discount. Now, which item did he choose? We have three items, as you see in the table, A, B, and C, and we have the main prices of each of them. We have the main price for each item A, B, and C. Well, in order to know which item did he choose, we need to find the main price for this item. Its sale price is $320, which represents for us Y. Now we're going to use the given in this part. If we refer again, we have designate by Y the price after discount and by x the main price we have just solved it so the sale price is y which is given 300 
20 dollars the original price is x and we don't know its value but we can use the relation that we have just established y is equal to 0.8x why did we use it since they are asking us to deduce so we should refer to the previous part which is y equals 0.8x now we have nothing between 0.8 and x so it's times to find x, we move 0.8 to the other side, so times becomes divided by. Well, why do we need to find x? x is the original price. So x is y divided by 0.8. Now what's the value of y? Isn't it $320? So we say that y is, uh, sorry, x is $320 over 0.8, so it's $400. If we refer to the table, which item has the price $400? It's the item B, so the customer bought the item B. Now, if the price is increased again by 20%, would this item return to its original price? We are still talking about the item B, which had the original price $400. Well, the customer paid for this price $320 as a sale price if this price increased by 20 percent should it return again to 400 dollars or not let's see the, uh, what happens after the 20 percent increase what becomes the price of this article isn't it 320 dollars plus 20 percent of 320 dollars so it's 320 dollars plus 20% it means that 20 over 100 of becomes times $320. Now we can simplify, we get it $320 plus $64. So the price of the article will become $384. Did it return to its main price? It was $400. So it's completely different, then the item will not return back to its original price. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for the continuity of our channel. Uh, please, these exercises are very important for the official exams for grade 9.